What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, we're gonna be getting the cab ready to get pulled tomorrow. Uh, we gotta disconnect the cab mounts, um, some wiring here, hoses. Um, I got my driver's sender pulled off already. The AC's already done. Uh, so we don't got much to do to get it ready to pull off. Um, to get your AC um, drained, uh, for mine, I just loosen this right here and let it bleed out. And uh, it sprays off everywhere. And here it's, I think it's 10 millimeter bolts. You got to pull off. And down here, there is one right here that, pull, that holds all that in place. And then your AC is disconnected. Um, for your fuse box, you just flip this open. And then there's plugs under here. Uh, I can't really get that with one hand right now. But you take the plugs for this main harness off. And then your ca cab is completely disconnected. Um, I got to replace my brake booster. So I'm going to take it completely off of there. But if you're not going to be doing that, then you can just disconnect your brake lines and your power steering lines and it'll come right off all right for a single cab you got four cab mounts um they're 18 millimeter bolts and depending on how rusty your truck is they'll either come out nicely or not but i sprayed some croil on there and let it sit for a while so they should be ready to come out the milwaukee impact will probably get them out all right, we're back. Um, I got the cab mounts out of there and they come out really easy. The bolts, um, they're not too bad, but I'm just gonna get all new hardware and new cab mounts. Uh, this is one of the rubbers. Um, it ain't good anymore. Um, started tearing apart the core support, drained out all the coolant. Um, then I just got to disconnect all the lines. You got your transmission cooler lines, your oil cooler, and I think that's all the lines I got to take off. And then you just got your two cab mounts for that, or not your cab mounts, but your core support mounts down here. Um, then I'll, you can lift it right off of there. Once we get this core support off of here, then we can rip out the radiator, you know, the condenser, the transmission cooler, power steering cooler. Um, so we can get this sanded down and completely painted this color all the way around. And that'll look a lot nicer. I mean, it's aluminum, so it's corroded in some spots and. So I just want to make it look nicer, but it's pretty easy to take out of here. Um, to get these lines off, this is for the transmission cooler, but it's the same for the lines that run back over here for the transmission as well and your power steering and all that. Um, there's just these little clips and you can get them with some needle noses and pull them right off and then this will pull right out of there. It's a quick to connect system, so it's pretty easy. All right, um, well, we got a little carried away. Uh, hydro boost is out of here. The fuse box is all gone. Uh, you know, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I figured, hey, if I'm restoring the whole truck, might as well replace bunch of stuff and just take it basically down to just the motor on the frame and i still have to get them um, all the cooler lines off i've been letting those sit in some croil so hopefully they come out of there a little easier i was having trouble up here with these they really didn't want to come out they're a little rusty in there so i'll try to get those popped out all right, so we got the core support removed. 
and it came off quite easy. I'm debating on um, pulling the motor and doing the oil pan this year because ne next year I'm going to pull it again and build it. But I think I just want to do the oil pan for now because, you know, it's right here and I just have a whole year of driving it until I take it apart again. So might as well pull the motor while it's easy and do the oil pan gasket. But that's it for tonight. Um, tomorrow we're going to pull the cab off and I also got to clean up this entire mess. I got bolts everywhere and parts and... I got to remember where all these bolts go. So see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, we're back. It's the next day and we're going to be getting the cab pulled. I got this toe strap on here and I got it evenly as possible. Had to wrap it around one more time because it was a little too long, but I think I got it, the strap points pretty even so when you pick it up it's not going to be tilted to one side we're just going to bring the lift in here with the forks and um, pick it up and hopefully everything goes good All right, we got the cab pulled off now. Um, it went pretty smooth. Uh, I didn't want to record it because I just wanted to pay attention to what was going on. Make sure we didn't mess anything up. Came off easy. Um, forgot to disconnect a few things, but we got those taken care of as we're taking it off. But now it's almost a bare frame. But it makes it a lot easier to do all the brake lines and work on the exhaust and the front end and just to do everything, having the cab off, painting the frame too. We can all get it done really easy. But we're not really gonna work on the frame. Right now we're gonna get the cab done and then we're gonna put that in the garage and then we'll bring the frame out get it all done so then we can put the cab onto the frame and then um, we'll work on the bed last. And hopefully we get it done by spring, but we'll see how it goes. And we're gonna be working on the rockers and cab corners and the floor pan in my truck. Um, I already got some work done the other day. Uh, I was just trying to get some stuff done so I didn't film it. Uh, so I'll show you what we got done. So we got it cut out of there um, and I fit it up and everything fits great. Uh, we still need to work on the floor pan because that's gone, but I had to create this lip right here because that was also rotted. Um, I just rough cut out the floor, you know, just the most of the rust and then I just gotta finish actually cutting out to the size that I need it. I had to come back here and remake this back half because that was rotted out. Um, then right now we got to clean all this rust up and throw some paint on it so it won't rust. I'm not doing the inner rockers because I mean, nobody ever does them, so I think it'll be fine. You don't even really see it. Uh, once we get this side done, then we can move on to the passenger side. And then after that, we can start doing all the body work on this cab. And then get it into primer and paint it. The welder I'm using is this little Hobart 140. Runs off a... 110 um, it works pretty good for sheet metal I have to see how it does on the thicker metal all right guys we're back and it's another day again um, we got to get these inside of these rockers painted up 
with poor 15 you know just to be sure it doesn't rust anymore um, and we're probably gonna get this floor pan finally welded in there today uh, and possibly the rockers um, just depends on how long this paint takes to dry I could still weld it on there with the paint wet but I'd rather just wait till it's completely dry all right, I got the floor pan cut out to where I want it to be. And I'm just gonna take this and then place it in there. And then from the bottom side, I'm gonna trace out what I need to cut. And we'll get it roughly to where we need and then we can cut some more down. All right, so I taped a little outside the lines that I traced. Um, just to be sure that I don't cut more than I need to and then we'll set it back in there and uh, We can get a better test fit and Then we'll cut it to where we need it All right, we got the floor pan cut out to size um, You you always want to have a small gap when you're welding in new body panels so your weld can penetrate. Um, if it's too tight of a gap, it won't penetrate. And when you grind it down, um, it won't be as strong. But it took me a couple tries to get this cut out right, just on this side right here. But other than that, uh, it's pretty good. So we're gonna get everything cleaned up and ready to weld. All right, um, we got the floor pan in here. Uh, we got everything cleaned up and on the edges where I'm not going to be able to get paint I threw some weld through primer um, just so it won't rust. Uh, I got these magnets here holding it into place to where I need it to be. Uh, we're going to get it tacked up and then make sure everything's where we want it and then we'll do all the tacks around which is going to suck because you can't lay a bead on sheet metal. You just got to tack all the way around different spots at a time so you don't warp it. So it's going to take a while. All right, uh, we're about to get started on this. So let's get it welded. some pretty good progress uh, we just got this left to do here and then up back in here and then uh, we'll be done with the floor pan we just got to grind down the welds and then next we'll get the rockers and cab corners welded in and then we can start on the other side finally got it fully welded in there they aren't the prettiest welds but you won't see them and I'm gonna grind most of them down and it's gonna hold. It's finally nice having a real floor pan instead of a metal plate that's self-tapped into there. And I'll definitely keep the noise down in the cab because there won't be so many, you know, there won't be holes in the floor. All right, we got everything fitted up here. Um, we're just getting this gap set. Just, I got it mocked up to where I need it. Uh, and I'm taking the grinder with the cutting wheel and just going in between this gap. Make sure I have an even one all the way around so I'll, my weld penetrates good. Um, maybe need to trim off a little more right there. Everywhere else it looks pretty good. Um, getting the cab corner gap fitted up as well. So in a little bit here, we're gonna get this welded up. All right, I got it tacked up there. Uh, we're gonna take the door and put it on there right now. Uh, 
make sure the gap between the door down here is even all the way down and this gap right here which it should all be where it needs to be so we're gonna get this door on all right we got stuff fitted up here the door on and the fender uh we just got to make sure that our fender is able to fit down here and our rocker isn't hanging down too low and it's tight and i'm pretty sure it's always been that tight but we're like that much off on the body line it's not that big of a difference but it's still sort of noticeable but i lined everything up on the pinch wall down here so like it's all even right here which is how it's supposed to be so i'm pretty sure i got it right and uh I mean, you really won't notice that body line when everything's put together and painted. But I think it's looking pretty good. I also ran into, that's kind of wavy down there. Um, and I really don't wanna, I can't bring it down and it should be lined up to where it needs to be because on that pinch weld, I think it's just how they're made and I mean, it's not going to be perfect because they're just replacement panels. So I think that's as best as we're going to get it. And you really won't notice it. Alright, um, we got it mostly welded in there. Got the cab corner exactly where it needs to be. That gap is perfect. Uh, so we just got to finish welding it. Um, we need to take the cutoff wheel and open up this gap a little more. Uh, so yeah, it'll penetrate good. The back side's a little wonky. Uh, but you don't see that. I'm doing the best I can. I mean, it's my first time ever doing something like this and I think it's turning out pretty good. Can't wait to get this thing into paint and it'll look amazing. got that all welded in uh, so we're gonna grind it down now and when you're grinding uh, you know you can use a big grinder with a flap disc on it and get it almost flush and then you can take one of these right angle die grinders with a sanding pad on it and then get it all the way flush and then we're gonna make sure that we filled in everything and got it completely welded. Uh, I finished also welding that. And then once we're completely done doing all the spot welds where we cut in, uh, and come back here, do all the spot welds on this lip. And then we'll be done with this side and then we can start on the bodywork getting it all smooth but all lines up good body gaps are all good pretty good for my first time ever doing this So we're back and we got all the spot welds done. Um, so now all we got to do is grind everything down and do all the body work and then prime it. 
All right, so we got everything ground down and um, pretty smooth to where we want it. Went a little past the weld, so our body filler can have metal to adhere to. You don't want to do it over paint. You can, but it's always better just to do it on bare metal. And before you lay your Bondo, you want to use some wax and grease remover uh, just to get the surface clean so you won't have any pinholes in your body filler. I'm going to lay a layer of fiberglass filler first to add a little bit more strength on here. Sand that down and then we'll do regular body filler and then after that we're going to do a glaze just to get it super smooth. Uh, so we, we got the, all that body work to do and yep. I um, we're about to get started on the body work and one thing you really need to invest in is one of these it's called clean sheets. Uh, it's a mixing pad and you just peel off the paper when you're done mixing. It's like 15 bucks, but it's really worth it because you don't have to clean off like a metal one. And you don't want to use cardboard because it's porous and it soaks in the resins from the body filler. So having this is really easy, and really convenient. So um, before you use your body filler, you always want to stir it and get all the resins mixed into everything. So it works properly. Um, when you use a body filler, you really don't want to put too much down because a little bit goes a long way. So put a little less than you think you really need. You could always mix up more. Uh, adding in your hardener, you also want to knead it, but you really just do the length of your body filler. Um, in hotter climates, you want to use less because it will dry up faster and you won't have as much work time. But it's a little cold out right now, so we're just gonna do the full thing. And when you're mixing it, uh, you don't want to stir, you just kind of want to pick it up and then drag it and get it evenly spread in there until everything's the same color. Because if you stir it, uh, you'll get air pockets in there and then that will cause pinholes in your body filler. So always just swipe it down like that. And to get a little more work time out of your body filler, spread it out flat so then your the heat releases so it doesn't harden up as fast. But we got a pretty even color now. And you pick up some and you just wipe it on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just, you can sand it down, but you're just trying to get this pushed into all the cracks and crevices, uh, get it pretty, as even as you can, so when you're sanding it's easier, but it's not a big deal if you don't. A good tip after you're done spreading your body filler uh, take a rag with the wax and grease remover and just wipe it right off and it gets it perfectly clean another way is to let it harden and then you kind of just flex this and it also pops off but I like doing it this way because then I can get it off right away and I can continue the work on more areas if I need to. All right, we got this all spread on here when we just gotta wait for it to dry. Uh, for small areas like this, you, you're gonna want 
a block about this big, you know, size of your palm. Uh, you can use your sander and knock down the high spots. Uh, it'll make it quicker, but when it comes to shaping, you want to block it so you can get everything real smooth. Uh, had some body work back here, but we're gonna wait for this to dry and then we can start sanding. All right, the body filler is um, hardened up and you wanna start with 80 grit to get your uh, edges down and then you can move to 120. Uh, but for fiberglass filler, I like to use just 80 grit because it's faster. And then once we get to the actual Bondo, uh, then I can, I'll just use 120 on the block. But let's get to work and sand in this. All right, we got everything sanded. Um, all feathered out nice and smooth. Uh, so now we're going to lay our body filler and I use this uh, 3M body filler, but any body filler will work. I just like this one. So let's get to it. I got the Bondo spread on there. Um, and now we're sanding, so I'll get back to you guys when I'm done. I got all the Bondo sanded down and I mean, it's, I didn't spread it perfectly. So we got some tiny little holes all over. Um, so we're gonna use this dolphin glaze and this spreads really nicely. It's just a finishing um, filler. It gets it super smooth and it self levels itself out. I got the glazing putty spread on there and we're gonna sand it with 120 now and get everything smooth and then we'll be done with the body work on this side at least. All right, I got everything sanded with 120. It's perfectly smooth, but that's gonna be it for today's video. I'll I'm just gonna do the other side on my own. So tune in next time. We'll probably be painting this thing. So see you guys later. Bye.